Hello there, Sunny Fung here. I hope you're all doing good. Um, welcome back to my channel. Um, in this video, I'm looking at a follow-up for the CPU cooler, which I did an unboxing for. In this case, it's the AXP um, 90 slash I full, which is the Intel version of the set of this CPU cooler I've got in hand here. I mean, this one is the AXP 90 slash R, which has got AM4 mounting system, but it's basically the same. So I want to see how this CPU cooler performed. Um, and I had, didn't really have much to test it again, so I had an Intel stock cooler lying around, and this one's the one with the gold. This one's got the copper slug on it, so this is one of the older ones. But I don't really know how much the copper slug does. But I also wanted to test something else as well, since this company in particular is very, very well regarded with their fans. And in this case, um, I decided to get myself some Noctuas. In this case, this is the Noctua um, NFA nine X fourteen. Which is also a low profile fan, bearing in mind that the fan that is included with the AXP90 is a 15mm slim fan. This is 14 though, but <clears throat> it's here and all there. So yeah, I, you know, I tested with the stock fan on there, I also tested with this fan on there, and I also tested with um different configuration of thermal interface material. I go into the presentation. I might make, might make, I can't talk now. Might make a bit more sense. So, <clears throat> first things first. As I said here, comparison between the Thermalrite AXP 90/I full CPU cooler against the Intel stock cooler, as well as comparing performance of the CPU cooler when the fan is replaced with a Noctua NFA 9X14 fan. So, first things first. Test that up. Um, got an Intel Core i9 9900K, which has been deleted. And it also uses a custom CNC copper um, IHS, so the integrated heat spreader is non-standard. It is bigger. It's got more. It's got a larger surface area. The RAM is got, uh, Corsair Vengeance Pro RGB, 32 gigs, um, specs at 3200 megahertz with CL16 timings. Uh, the motherboard is an ASRock Z390 Phantom Gaming ITX slash AC. The SSD is a Cyberant Rocket, one terabyte NVMe SSD. This one's a PCI 3.0 version and also the power supply is an enhanced ENP 7660B 80 plus platinum flex ATX power supply. This is actually a 600 watt power supply. Um, you know these are what I intend to use in the PC but I'll I'll explain what uh, a bit, bit more at the end um, because there is going to be a change. So stress test use I use Prime 95 V266 with small FFTs. I was intending to use um, v 29.8 for FFT to stress it, but uh, with the stock cooler, it pooed itself really hard. Uh, and then I use v 26.6 and it still pooed, pooed itself really hard. You'll understand in a second when I move into the, the graphs. Uh, temperatures and power usage were monitored by using CPU ID uh, HDB monitor. Um, you know, the figures on there is what I'm, you know, I'm comparing figures with figures from all there, so it's all good. So, first things first, as you can see. Intel stock cooler, thermal right AXP uh, 90 slash I full with standard fan, which is the TL 9015R. And then to the right, you've got a thermal right AXP 90i full with a Noctua NFA 9X14. Um, with the Intel stock cooler, I only tested it with thermal gridded cryonaut thermal interface material because once I tested it with that, I thought it was rather pointless even bothering to test with it since. It bricked it, you know, it kind of it pooed itself so hard early on in the game. Uh, I did test with Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut and Conductonaut for the liquid, uh, well, the, the, for the liquid metal test as well. So there are four sets of results in total for the AXP90, a single set of results for the Intel Stock Cooler. Um, as you can see here, one of the Disadvantages, should we say, of Intel's stock cooler designs that it doesn't really take advantage of the surface area available on the IHS for thermal uh, transfer. Then again, even if it could transfer the heat, I'm pretty sure the stock cooler is unable to dissipate that amount of heat. Then you've also got the AXP 90 slash I full. But yeah, first things first, please can you just take a moment to appreciate how beautiful that is? That's a photo I took on my phone. Um, you know, using the mirror finish from the the base, the base plate um, of the cooler to take a photo of the setup. But 
it's absolutely beautiful that mirror finish i absolutely love it um but yeah moving more on to more you know serious stuff with this being a flat surface as well rather uh, and not and also it's actually rectangular rather than being a uh, circular like the slug on the intel stock cooler the axp 90 was actually able to take full advantage of the surface area of the custom uh, IHS. I haven't got any photos of the liquid metal uh, application, but I will probably do a video as well on me tearing down the uh, MSI GeForce RTX 2070 ROITX graphics card when I do the thermal comparisons. So, on to the results. The first set of results will be for the Thermal Grizzly Cryonauts test, and then the second set of results will be Thermal Grizzly Conductor test. So first things first, um, in the bottom left, you can probably see the ambient temperature is 18 degrees Celsius. So it's relatively cold, relatively cold. So, you know, you might want to have some good results because if you don't, you're going to be, you know, a bit eh, uncomfortable, which is something I'll be going into afterwards. So first things first, um, let's go with where the red bit is. Because the Intel stock cooler, this is using, you know, bearing in mind, this is using uh, Prime 95 V26.6 small FFTs. Um, when it was loaded, it bricked itself and it hit, reached 115 degrees, which I think is the thermal limit. And it actually downclocked from 4.7 gigahertz all cores to 4.3 gigahertz all cores. Not good. It's interesting you see that because in idle, these CPU cores are very similar. Then again. We're talking 18 degrees ambient, and the CPU coolers, you know, aren't really having to do much. So, um, yeah, then you move on towards the top two. So, <clears throat> this is basically a comparison between the fans now. So, the NFA9X14 and the Thermalrights TL-9015R. And, how do I put this? The, th the first thing I need to make note of is the fact that the fans you know, are rated for different speeds. The Noctua is rated for 2500 RPM. The Thermal Right Fan is rated for 2700 RPM. Doesn't sound like a big difference. In terms of noise levels, the Thermal Right Fan is slightly louder, but it's not the end of the world. At idle, the Noctua was spinning at roughly 900 RPM. The uh, Thermal Right was spinning roughly at 1200 RPM, but the difference in noise wasn't significant enough that it would bother anyone. But under load, the thermal right was slightly louder. Was it a significant amount? Mm, yeah, maybe noticeable if you heard them side by side, maybe one after another. But you know, between the runs and changing the fans, no, I couldn't tell a difference realistically. But one thing you can tell the difference of is a difference in temperatures. Ah, look at this 111 degrees reached with the Noctua fan installed on the CPU cooler. Whereas with the, you know, with the TL9015R, which is provided stock with the CPU cooler, uh, the AXP90, um, yeah, it's 105 degrees. And also, yeah, I mean, it's, it's 6 degrees difference. But with that, you can also see that there's also a reduction in power draw of roughly 3.5 watts based on hardware uh, monitors um, information that it displays. So, the initial impression I had... You know, going into this, I expected Noctua to win. I was like, yeah, it's a bit, you know, Noctua, they make, you know, they've got good reputation for making good fans. You know, their fans should be awesome. Um, And I was there thinking, you know, when I saw these results, I was slightly confused. I'll be honest, I was genuinely confused. So then I moved on to the next set of testing, which was the, uh, the conductor note, liquid metal. And here we are. Um, Nothing's really changed. Hmm. So at idle, you know, before we go into low temperatures, at idle, once again, the um, standard fan that came with the AXP90 CPU cooler was, you know, spinning around 1200 RPM. The Notcher was spinning around about 900 RPM. So, you know, minor differences in, in noise levels, nothing major. But under load, the thermal right, okay, it's, it may probably a tad louder. It wasn't a massive 
difference that was noticeable. It might have been a tad louder. It might have only it's only 200 RPM higher roughly than the Noctua fan at full speed on the full load. But um, I don't know what Noctua did with this fan, but it didn't do it any favors because you know 100 degrees was reached. Bear in mind this is an open bench. You know, it's open on my kitchen table. Um, but yeah, 100 degrees compared to 97 degrees with the stock fan. And yeah, it's it's a bit it's a bit of a blow in that sense because I was I, I thought that the Noctua fans were going to win. And as you can see, there's also a further reduction in power draw. So 173.84 watts is the peak power draw, and 168.52 peak power draw there. So a drop of uh, just over 5 watts. So what can I what can I well what can I say about this? Um I mean there are many things that impact the design of say CPU cores on fans and stuff like that. I mean I don't know what the major differences are. I mean the only major difference I can think of, first of all, is that you know, the fan is one mil thicker. That might give someone like more room to you know increase the angle of the sweep. You can also see the fan designs are very different as well. So, whereas the Noctua fans are quite, they've got quite broad blades and they're relatively shallow. It looks like the AXP 90s fan has got shorter, uh, shorter and stubbier blades, but they're probably at a steeper angle cur uh, or curve, which can bring more air in. I'm not sure. All I can say is, um, I'm disappointed with the Noctua fan. That's uh, I'm disappointed with the Noctua fan. So, I guess that's one part of this review. I mean, the, this is effectively two th two videos in one. But yeah, I'm disappointed in the Noctua NF A9 X14. I'm not going to lie. I was expecting more of this. Um. So, to the main point though, the AXP90 CPU cooler from Thermal Rice. What do I make of this? I think it's a good CPU cooler, but. This is rated for 145 watts. As you saw before, we're looking at messing around with 170 watts of power or whatever the readout is. Then again, that doesn't necessarily translate directly to um, the heat output and whatnot, but it's, it's a lot more power than we're probably designed for. And so, with that in mind, um, you know, I'm... I've ended up deciding, you know, with this system that I'm going to be building, I'm going to change the CPU. So instead of having an Intel Core i9-9900K, I'm going to be switching to an Intel Core i7-9700K. So instead of having 8 cores, 8 threads, 8 cores, 8 threads, 8 cores, 16 threads, I'll be going to 8 cores, 8 threads. Uh, hopefully, it should allow me to be able to manage the temperatures better. I will probably do another thermal test at some point with the same CPU cooler, with the same kind of test, but I'll probably do liquid metal only. I don't know. Or should I do... So should I do? I think I might do cryonauts and liquid metal just to see how big of an improvement there is in between the two. But yeah, that's the conclusion of that one. So the three big conclusions that came out: this fan. I'm not a fan of this fan. Pun intended. This CPU cooler, I'm a very big fan of. And, um, yeah, trying to fit an i9 9900K into a tiny 4 litre system is probably unrealistic by all stretches of the imagination. Anyway, um, thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully, you found it interesting. Hopefully, you learned something new. Um, hopefully, you liked it. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you want to see more content in the future that I upload, please subscribe. And I also do streaming on Twitch. I'll be back on, I think, either Monday or Tuesday. So that'll be 16 for the, the 15th or 16th of June. I mean, currently I've got a bit of a hand injury from a bit of a streaming marathon I did recently. So you can always go back and check that out. You know, 56 hours of cart rider drift closed beta test 2 <laughs> across six nights. But yeah, um, other than that, you know, that's, that's me done here. So yeah, until the next video, you know, I, I'm out. Catch you in the next one.